Okay, so I came across this and I decided to put it down in a video. So some abnormalities, gate abnormalities. Or we could just simply say different types of gates. Okay. I have so many of them. All right, this image actually what comprises of a better picture showing almost all the gates that we have. Okay. So quickly look at them and um, compare them with the images so that at least you can know what each gate actually means. All right. So these were different types of gates. All right. Abnormalities. But first of all, we'll start to the normal gate. Okay. So um, different types of gates can indicate various medical conditions. Okay. Or it could mean that you are actually what, trying to adapt to some physical challenges that you have. Like somebody whose leg is now shorter than the other one, that's the way they will walk, okay? And this is trying to adapt for a better life, okay? So for, so for the common types of gates that we have, we have the normal gates. For description, normal gates is a normal one, all right? So you have a smooth, rhythmic, and coordinated walking pattern, okay? Normal one is not actually here because this one is for abnormality. Not really here, okay? They always focus on the abnormality, okay? Now, looking at the, okay, faces, it includes the stance face, which is foot in contact to the ground, and the swing face, which is what, foot in the air, okay? They're looking at the autalgic gates, antalgic gates, antalgic gates, let's find it here, this is antalgic gates. Now, for antalgic gates, we say that this one is actually a painful gate. And it's characterized by a shortened stance, okay, on the affected side. And this is just to minimize weight bearing. You don't want to actually put so much stress on that part of the body, okay? So it's often due to what, maybe a pain in the leg, pain in the foot, pain in the hip, okay? Now, looking at ataxic gates, I'm talking about an uh, antalgic. So ataxic, this is ataxic gait. This one is an unsteady and staggering gait. It's like you are staggering, you are walking, you are staggering, okay? With a wide base of support, okay? So it's often due to what? Cerebral dysfunctions or balance disorders, okay? Then looking at the tread, the Lemberg gait. Tread, the Lemberg gait. This one, one hip is higher than the other one, okay? So we said that this one is actually a waddling gait with a noticeable drop on the pelvis on both sides, on the opposite, sorry, on the opposite side of the affected hip. So as you are walking, one side of the pelvis is higher than the other one, okay? So your hip is kind of like twisted like this, you get? So it's due to weakness of the hip abductor muscles, particularly the gluteus medius, okay? The hemiplegic gait, Hemiplegic gates. Okay, not really here. Not really here. All right, let's just talk about it. It's a gate where the leg is steep and it swings outward in a semicycle with each step. And the arm on the same side is often flexed. Okay. So, what is the cause of hemiplegic gates? It's often due to things like stroke or neurological conditions affecting one side of the body. Okay. Then let's look at spastic gait. This is um spastic gait. Where is spastic gait? Spastic gait is there. Okay. So this is spastic gait. Can you see how the person's leg are actually positioned? Okay. Spastic. It's a gait with stiff, awkward movement, and the legs may curl over each other, scissoring. Okay. So, cause is often due to conditions like what cerebral palsy or multiple sclerosis. They're looking at the Parkinson's gait. Parkinson's gait, where is it? All right, not really here, but let's describe it. So, Parkinson's gait is also known as a shuffling gait. Okay, it's also known as a shuffling gait. All right. So, in shuffling gates, there's actually small step. It's like the person is going and coming back, going and coming, shuffling, just like a soft shuffling some cards. So, there's reduced arm swinging and there's difficulty starting or even stopping motion. Before the person starts walking, there's difficulties, and before they stop, there's a problem. 
So it's associated with your Parkinson's disease, okay? They're looking at stepage gates. For description, this is stepage gate. Stepage gate is like you are doing a big step, a big stepper. You are raising your, hand, your leg very up before you drop, okay? So for description, stepage gate is a gate where the foot is lifted high to avoid dragging the tools, okay? Often accompanied by a slap on the floor, okay? So it's often due to what? Things like foot drop or weakness of the dorsiflexors. Then waddling gates. Waddling gate. This is waddling gate, okay? So waddling gate is a gate with exaggerated side-to-side -side movement, resembling a dog waddle. Okay, so it's often due to what weakness or instability in the hip muscles. Then we have the festinant gait. Festinant gait, not really here. Okay, snap it. All right. So um, for description, we said that this is a gait where the steps become progressively shorter and faster, often with a forward leaning posture. So it's commonly seen in advanced Parkinson's disease. Right. So these are the different gates. If you understand these different gates and the different conditions where you can find them, it will help you in diagnosing and recognizing various medical conditions. Okay, so that's it, guys.